Hi, so uh, James Henry again. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what added value um, does creativity give to the analytical process that an an analytics alone uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't have? Um, you want to... <laughs> You want a quantified number? <laughs> Should I make one up? <laughs> no, I mean, it's something probably very qualitative. In terms okay, of good. Uh, uh, well, the, the, the question is how much value does analytics actually give if you don't have the creative element? And, and I would say there could be short-term successes, um, but one of the problems that, that we've, we've seen, that I've certainly seen, is sometimes analytics themselves and the use of data isn't sticky enough within organizations. And in part, that's just because of taking a very technical view of analytics. Um, where, where there's creativity, then it tends to get stickier. And so uh, how about it's a, uh, um, I'd say, I, I think it's, it's a huge amount of, of added value. Now, there's going to be a different mix of skills, and uh, you know, we haven't talked anything about teams and, and teams having different, different skill sets, so, uh, which I think would address also your, your question earlier, you know, having a, a mix and having the great storyteller working with, with the person maybe who is more hardcore, um, just digging into into the numbers. Although I think everyone, every analyst needs to dig into into data. I think it's actually a huge incremental value. I think those those organizations that really use this creativity um, get the largest value. Otherwise, what you see is, and this was this was talked about by somebody, uh, maybe you at, at board about always following. You know, it, because then you're always looking for other people's ideas, and rather than being creative and coming up with the new innovative ideas. So if you want to be a leader, you've got to have creativity. I don't see any other way around it. So I think good on that. There's, there's two elements for me. Um, I think the first one is the whole value that creativity brings is you ask the right question in the first place. Um, the actual analytics itself that you do will, will not be very different. But if you set it up to ask the right question um, and you work out what the inputs you need to kind of drive yourself towards an answer, I think that's where the creativity comes in. We saw that in Judy's presentation is you, you, you start with 10,000 or 30,000 possible variables um, and what you need to do is work out which of the 10 you're interested in. Um, whatever scale, whether that's like normal data or big data or whichever one it is. Yeah. Um, and I think the second one, innovation, is extremely relevant, right? What you want to do is do things smarter every time. Um, and there's no point doing it as smart as the guy next to you. It's, you're never going to grow faster and win market share that way. The, there was an article recently about um, analytics where it was you know, a journalist interviewing uh, a practitioner of analytics. And he was very impressed by what was on the whiteboard, which was what looked like the equations and formulas and stuff. And he asked him, so do we have to master this to be able to get something out of analytics? And the guy answered properly. He said, don't be bothered by this. The hard part is figuring out what's happening in the customer's mind. The mathematics is actually the easy part. And it's easy to be impressed by all the, the techniques behind this. But now I feel that the tools and the technology. Am I talking too long? <laughs> 30 seconds. It's nothing personal. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'll take that as the one minute. But the <laughs> so the technology and the tools are you know, getting built so that a lot of this methodology is being commoditized. And the really hard part is trying to figure out what's happening in the customer's mind and breaking that down into, as Judy mentioned, how do we quantify it? How do we quantify the interesting part of the behavior so that we can notice it? That's the hard part. I mean, yeah. I mean, creativity is not just for me something which is uh, good to have or uh, it's value added. It's absolutely necessary because yeah. in the end, what we're trying to do here uh, is really to get closer to the customer, to understand who they are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how they behave and so on. And these, the, you've got huge amounts of data 
Okay? Uh, they, you know, you, you have to make sense of that, and you need to make assumptions, and for that you need to be creative. At least mm -hmm. understand where yep. to, to start from, you know? One comment. Yeah. In terms of asking questions, I think historically you would ask, the marketing team would ask an analyst to do X, Y, and Z because of what they want to do. I think the way forward is to ask the analyst or pose the analyst your business challenge. Let the analyst who want to have this creativity help you solve that business challenge, but you've got to pose the question differently. Most analytical yeah. functions are asked, do X, Y, and Z. They give a because brief. That's what I think I need to see. Yeah. And that doesn't work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it just doesn't work. Because they just end up having another yeah. question, another question, and you don't get that creativity in the inside. Yeah, I just want to actually comment on that because I actually believe that there, just as, just as we see that there's a growing trend towards being in a community, doing collaboration in your life, you know, the world is changing. People are networking together and, and collaborating in ways we never would have expected 15 years ago. I think analytics is going to be moving um, after some technology is, is worked out. It's going to be moving in, in a very collaborative fashion. It's going to look differently. Ten years from now, you know, it's not going to be the lone analyst, you know, working. It, working by him, him or herself, or even the analyst paired with the marketing person, we're really going to be seeing, um, you know, taking out some of the ego from analytics and, and collaborating. There's some infrastructure that has to be worked out, but I really think that society is actually moving in a way that's going to enable this, this process. Um, dangerous question, given <laughs> where we're doing this conference. But do the panel think that enough academic institutions are stepping up to the plate in providing the right kind of education that will blend both the business side, the analytical side, and the creative side? And then there's silence. <laughs> <laughs> As a professor, I won't answer. No. <laughs> Given how hard it is to hire, I'm tempted to unfortunately say no. But <laughs> that maybe they're lagging. But I think that there's certainly an interest from, uh, from what I've been hearing. There's an interest in developing programs, developing courses that really can, can be more innovative, more, let, let's say, creative. <laughs> can I make a comment on that? Richard? Yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Chris Halliburton, Professor of Marketing here at the school, another one. Honestly, the challenge is, the big challenge is not how big the data gets, it's just how quickly the tools, the methods, the possibilities change. The culture. Mm -hmm. The culture also. And so it means that, you know, you think you have a job, you think you have a way to do your job, and, you know, you finally kind of get your head around that and are able to deliver on that, and then everything has changed. And you're like, okay, I have to relearn everything. So, you know, to be fair, it's going to be hard for an academic institution to follow through with that because it's hard for the, you know, industry to just keep trying to harness how to deal with the changing reality. Um, I think, you know, this is a, a new thing that is very hard to, to, um, to follow. That they, it feels like we're just following a, a moving monster. Academic institutions should be leaders in this. They should be promoting the idea and doing sort of quick studies with, with, with industry. You know, some of them are going to fail. Let's fail fast on these to see different ways that, you know, that analytics can, can actually evolve. It's not just, and part of that's going to be driven by, you know, management, but it's how should that management do it? You know, what is the process? How do you encourage this? 
How do you no. change a culture? Um, Lovell Stave, I'm a marketing consultant for ESCP Europe. Um, all the speakers have, have talked quite a lot about how to use big data, the analytics and the creativity to improve, enrich and, and push forward the relationship with the customers, which I think is perfectly uh, legitimate. What is, on the other hand, the role and the use of big data analytics today in the product development, in the product innovation? Maybe it's a subset of, of, of the relationship. Same if thing. You, if you understand the customer mm -hmm. better. But is there a, a, today a sort of move, expectations, uh, a demand from the product marketing, from the product development sides of, of companies to really a better use of the big data? Well, I can give us, I mean, I can, let me give a specific example referring to my little vets here. Mm -hmm. um, the, the company behind uh, once understood better the profiling of the vets and they understood as well that some of the vets actually were business minded. Uh, then they started, as I said, to offer you know, different products, actually what they call solutions. Okay? But to, to give a very concrete, specific example, um, the vets want on their side to be closer to the, their clients, which are the pet owners. Okay? And, uh, and now this company is providing the vets with uh, devices which actually are um, motion detectors that you, know, you, you put on the, on the leash of the dog uh, and then you can track the, you know, the movements of the dogs and the, how much exercise the dog is doing and so on, which is fantastic for a vet because then he can get back to the pet owner and tell them, you know, your dog is, you know, too much um, idle or something like that. So just to, to give you a specific example that it, it does in fact, I believe, a lot mm -hmm. the product development, especially if you want to get, again, closer to, to your customers. Mm -hmm. so I, I car manufacturers, right? There's a, a lot of devices within a car to report on how the car is used. And every time, if you go to the shop, essentially that data gets uploaded. Very soon it will just get uploaded through SIM cards in any case. And this is used to basically help the manufacturer understand how are people driving the car. It's not like they're watching people otherwise, right? So I think when you have something like e-commerce where our product is just, it's literally the site you log onto and the services it provides, it's, there isn't just demand, there's an absolute necessity. Um, if we think about, we have 300 million things worldwide and we've got to find the right one for you. Um, it's impossible not to be using huge quantities of data and a lot of algorithmic design. I think when we talked earlier, we talked about the role of the analyst. <laughs> one of the things we, we haven't been talking about is how much of actually this analysis is algorithmic, automated, and essentially process driven, um, either non-creative parts. And for us, that's a lot of where the product is, where yeah. you have 25 million searches every day. Then when you layer those over time, you can start to understand the behaviors. And I think anything certainly in the kind of e-commerce retail arena, if you're not levering that data, then you probably won't be around in a few years. In any arena. <laughs> in any arena. I'm, I'm yeah. letting offline off, yeah. because you know, they have a few more issues, yeah. but um, I think it's absolutely a necessity. Thank you very much to our panel.